Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the rollup and cube keywords in Oracle. These are really useful when we are aggregating our data and we want to get different types of subtotals or maybe a sub average um, across certain non aggregate columns in our data. So I've selected from the vendors table here and what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just grab the um, let's see we'll do the um, um, vendor state actually we'll do the vendor ID the vendor state and the vendor city and when we run this you'll see here we have um, multiple vendors from Arizona we have multiple from Anaheim California in fact we have a whole bunch from California here so what if I wanted to just know, uh, for example, my count of vendors by state and city? Well, we know we can just add in a count, and because I am um, uh, going to group by the non-aggregate columns here, because I can't tell you how many people are in a state and city until I put these in rows into groups, and I group them by state and city. So now we see, right, there was three from Phoenix, Arizona. There's the two from Anaheim, and that's pretty great. But what if we wanted to quickly know, like, well, how many are from California? So some data has a hierarchy to it. And in this case, states and cities and zip codes have a hierarchy. Um, and so what do I mean by that? Uh, think about like time as an example. Uh, you have years, which are broken into months, which are broken into weeks, which are broken into days, and then hours, and then minutes. And so you can see there's a hierarchy. 60 minutes rolls up to one hour, uh, 24 hours rolls up to one day, seven days rolls up to a week, and 52 weeks rolls up to a year, and and certain number of weeks rolls up to months. But you can see here the hierarchy. Uh, for example, there are also like product categories. Uh, so you might have, um, you know, clothing department. And within that, there could be a division within that, right? That could be, you know, adults and there could be children's. And then within that, you could actually have the products themselves. There's a hierarchy. And so in this case, uh, location provides a hierarchy. States are made up of many cities and cities are made up of many zip codes. Zip codes are made up of many blocks. So we, in this case, we could actually subtotal using this hierarchy and rolling up from there. So all we have to do is simply add in this rollup keyword. And when we run it, what you're gonna see here is it's going to give us the subtotal by state and city, which it just did, but it's also adding in some other subtotals. So let's understand what rollup does, and then we'll actually talk a little bit about what cube does, and then I'll show you an example of both one more time. So what is rollup doing? Um, simply put, the first thing, it, you know, when we didn't have the rollup is that we were getting the subtotal by state and city. When we added the rollup in, what it started to do was also do the subtotal and it rolled up the hierarchy. So it gave us a subtotal by state and then it's also giving us a subtotal of all the columns. And so let's jump back and look at that in the SQL. So if you see here, when I ran this query, I'm getting the subtotal by state and city. I'm also getting the subtotal by state, which happens to be the same because there's only one city here with three vendors. But look, notice here, we have California. So there's two from Anaheim, uh, you know, uh, one from Inglewood. If we roll down here, you'll see that there are 75 from the state. So city, state and city, we're also getting it at a state level. And like I said, we also get a subtotal at the very bottom of all the states. So there's 122 vendors and you can tell, well, how many are from each state? You can figure that out. And we could actually go in and, you know, for example, let's just do this. Let's, let's go and create a, uh, or replace a view. And we're gonna call this vendor uh, summary. Okay. Oh, we need to add a count here. All right. So now that I've created this view, and we'll talk about views at some point. If we haven't talked about them yet, don't worry about them. But simply, it's just a saved query. And so now what I can do is say, I want to go select from the vendor summary uh, where vendor state equals California. And we have it there, right? 
But I could also say and vendor city equals, uh, let's see, is null. That'll tell me uh, the total. Uh, but I can also, if I take that out, I can get any one of these. All right, so that's what Rollup kind of does. And I just created this view just to show you that, you know, once I have this summarized data, uh, it's kind of useful that I could go in there and, you know, look at this data um, and I could get pretty much any subtotal I want out of this hierarchy. Now, what if there was a chance that there was a city in one town like Fairfield, Illinois, uh, Iowa, and then as you scroll down through here, you find out that there's a Fairfield, Virg uh, New Jersey, right? Well, can you get a subtotal by city? Well, let's talk about cube for a second and talk about what that's doing. And I know I said we were going to talk about cube, but um, one more thing, just to, to ask you what would happen in this rollup if we did add in uh, the zip code. Um, it's simply going to first give us the subtotal by state city zip but then it's going to roll up that hierarchy. So you would also get a subtotal at the state city level, you would get a subtotal at the state level, and you would get a subtotal of everything. So just being aware when your data has a hierarchy, roll up is useful when you want to get subtotals. You might think, well, would I ever want to get a subtotal at the city level or the zip level? And you might think, nah, I probably don't. Uh, and that's probably because there's no hierarchy there. It right? doesn't make sense. Like for example, if we use cube, it's going to do the same thing as rollup. It's going to give us the subtotal of state and city. It's going to give us the subtotal of state level, but it's also going to subtotal at a city level. So you saw back there where we had Fairfield, Iowa, and Fairfield, New Jersey. In that scenario, there would be one from Fairfield, Ohio. There'd be one from Fairfield, New Jersey. There would be two from the city of Fairfield, and it will give me the subtotal of everything. So that's what cube is doing. It's coming up with all the possible iterations and combinations of the non-aggregate columns. So let's go back and look at that. So if I were to go in here and change this, you'll see here we have our subtotals by state city, we have our subtotals by state, and we have our subtotal of everything. So it's rolled up the hierarchy. Let's change this to cube and run this. And again, you may think, well, this looks the same. I've got the subtotal by state and city. I've got the subtotal by state. I'm just expecting, wait a minute, hold on, what's happening here? You see, yeah, now we're subtotaling by city. And you'll notice here, Fairfield. Remember how earlier we were looking at it and there was a Fairfield, Iowa, and there's a Fairfield, New Jersey, so we've subtotaled by city. In this scenario, because the data has a hierarchy, it probably doesn't make a ton of sense to use the cube. But let's go and use another example here. Let's use something like invoices. And what we'll do is we're gonna grab the vendor ID. Uh, we'll grab the invoice date. And I'm going to go ahead and take the sum of the invoice total. And then let's go ahead and group by. And so here we have vendors and dates and the total of invoice, uh, the total, um, you know, sum of invoices for each day. We don't necessarily know. Um, we're just grouping by vendor and date. So it's possible that we could have some vendors that had two uh, invoices on the same date. Um, and if that was the case, we could uh, even throw in, let's say an invoice ID here, just in case we wanna see that. This might just get more confusing. So yeah, here we, we have, uh, you know, now it's broken out. Um, and there might come a situation here, like for example, this one, we have vendor 97 on the same date, sent us two invoices for 995. If I take that invoice ID out, vendor 97, you'll see here that it's now just subtotaling it, you know, it's it's grouping it by vendor and invoice date. Um, let's go back and do that like that. Let's, let's do it like this, just so that we can see how it's all gonna work. So if I go ahead and roll this up, now, rollup makes sense when there is a hierarchy, and you could say there are invoices, many invoices on one date, and each date a lot relates to a certain vendor. So if I run this, you'll see here, here's the subtotal for this uh, vendor invoice and ID, and this invoice ID. If I subtotal for everything on that date for that vendor, it's the same because they only had one invoice. Um, if I went down here and looked at, let's say, vendor 97, you would see, hey, here's the total for each invoice on May 9th. Here's their total for May 9th. Uh, so that's looking at both of those. And then here's the subtotal for the entire vendor, which happens to be the same because 
they didn't invoice us on different days. So, um, you know, pretty interesting, pretty useful. But what if I wanted to also know the um, subtotals by date? So maybe there's a chance that there's more than one person uh, invoiced us on June 6th, and I'm pretty certain there is. So let's let's do that. Let's go here and do a cube. And I'm gonna take the invoice ID out for a second just to kind of make this, because otherwise it's gonna come up with a lot of iterations. Um, okay, so here we have it. Uh, you'll see here that we've got the subtotal by vendor ID and date. We've got the subtotal by vendor. And we also have the subtotal of all the vendors, which is going to be down here. And so what Q has done is it's also looked at the subtotal by date. So we have, you know, again, we've got the subtotal by ID and date, the subtotal of the vendor rolling up the hierarchy. It's got the subtotal of everything here at the very bottom, but it's also doing the subtotal by date. And so in this case, if I look at, uh, let's go with June 6th. June 6th, you'll see that there was 2200, um, you know, uh, about 2244 on invoices sent to us. Uh, if I go up here and I want to, again, um, look at where the, and in fact, let's do like we did before and let's just create a view of this. Let's create a view. We'll call this invoice, invoice summary. All right, so now that we have this invoice summary, let's go and select star from this summarized table. And if I wanna go in here and say, all right, let's just say where the uh, invoice date equals 06 June, uh, this is some old invoices. Yep, so sure enough, we see here, here's the subtotal for everything. Um, and, you know, and the subtotal for that date. So I could also go in here and say, hey, where the vendor ID equals 95. And you'll see here that this vendor ID has, you know, that they've invoiced us on multiple days. Uh, and then they've also invoiced us on uh, this, um, you know, total you know, we have their total invoice. So essentially what the cube has done here is that it's come up with any possible, if you, and, and this is the thing that analytics wants. We wanna be able to answer any question you throw at us. If you asked me, um, you know, hey, what was the total that we sold on a certain day? I can tell you that, because I have that information right here. If you ask me what was the total that a specific vendor uh, did, I could tell you that by saying where the vendor ID equals that vendor ID and the invoice date is null. Um, if you ask me how many total invoices, what we did in total, I could give you that number. The cube has come up with all of the possible scenarios, whereas the roll up is only going to roll up that hierarchy. So there you have it, that's Rollup and Cube. Um, Rollup, useful when you wanna aggregate data that has a hierarchy. Cube, useful when you wanna be able to answer every possible combination of non-aggregate columns to answer any question that you might get. And then we can take all that um, built up table, Rollup and Cube, we can make it a materialized view or we can put it into a table, a summary table, and then we can plug Power BI or Tableau into that and we can easily pivot and you know answer any question we ever need. So pretty useful, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments, let me know. Thanks.